Hi everyone, this is Ken. Welcome to my channel. So today I'm gonna show you how to get started with Clojure coding with CIDR in Emacs. So um, roughly I'm gonna talk about how to jack into a repo and evaluate things and auto completion, definition lookup and things like that. So without further ado, let's get started. So first, let's uh, take a look at how to uh, jack into a repo. Basically, it means that how to connect to a um, repo and start and prepare the environment for um, closure coding. So here you can see that I have prepared a simple file for demo purpose. So first, let's uh, connect or jack into a CIDR by closure repo. So first, let's get started by connect to a start a repo and connect to it by typing the command control control c control j and then wait for a while because starting a jvm um, usually takes uh, some time so just be patient so this is basically how to jack in or connect to a repo and sometimes for example, when I'm on Windows, um, it's a little tricky to jack in to a repo like like like, like the list. Oh, by the way, I'm on Linux right now. So on Windows, I'd rather start a repo manually and then connect to it by executing this command, uh, CIDR connect closure. And next, let's take a look at how to evaluate things so uh, for example if uh, if our um, cursor is inside this function we can evaluate uh, this function by typing control matter x and uh, you can see that if we evaluate successfully um, you get back with a prompt says um, telling us the result because here we the result is just the function symbol, so here it is. And uh, we can also uh, evaluate the preceding form. Say uh, right now my cursor is right here, and uh, I can evaluate the same function by executing Control X, Control E. Yeah, same thing here. And uh, after some time, uh, as our buffer grows a little more and more, uh, we may want to evaluate the whole buffer at once. So at that point, we can just uh, type Control S, Control K, and you see that the whole uh, buffer will get evaluated, and uh, the uh, result, the result of the last expression will get showed at the bottom area or the echo area because that is uh, the result for this this form and uh, another thing i want to show you here is that since um you can see that the the result for this uh, form is a little uh, uh, quite huge so it can get fit in the whole screen so in this case we can um, type control X control P to evaluate the last expression and uh, get a result in a dedicated buffer so we can um, uh, see it in details and um, let's look at uh, how to um, do auto completion um, yeah by looking up the side manual it says that we can use tab or matter tab to uh, trigger or manually trigger a completion but I rarely do it instead we can use some completion frameworks such as company mode to do auto completion for us for example here I have defined some functions here uh, we have grid we have my some functions so if I want to uh, call this grid function just type some characters so so that company would uh, show us some candidates 
about all the symbols that are currently available for us to use. We can use a meta two, and uh, you get down and, uh, and then passing uh, another your yeah, name yeah hi here can and uh, evaluate it and we get the the result we want and uh, next let's talk about how to look up things for example as our program grows bigger and bigger we need to jumping around to need to jump around to see uh, how some uh, functions or macros are defined or where they are defined this definition lookup functionality is based on uh, the S drive interface so it's quite easy to use if uh, you have some experience uh, with ellipse we can use uh, we can just use a meta dot to jump into the definition oops I think I have made a mistake here this should be uh, yeah it should be like this so use a meta dot to jump into the its definition its definition position uh, should I say that after some time we may need to go back and uh, we can just use or uh, type meta comma and go back at some time we may want to um, look up the doc streams for a function for example to uh, fully understand how it, how it works or how um, the function arguments arguments look like uh, so in this case we can just type uh, control C control D control D again yeah then it will pop up with um, buffer saying how so uh, how how the function arguments looks like and uh, yeah where it is defined things like that sometimes uh, we may want to because by default it look up the definite uh, doc strings of the symbol under the cursor and uh, but sometimes we may want to look up other symbols so uh, for example here right now I'm on this common symbol but I want to look up the doc string for this my sum function so um, in this case I can just prefix the command by typing control u and then control c control d control d and uh, it will prompt us um, which symbol we want to look up so here I can and uh, then I type in the function that I want to look up and uh, yeah it works like this and uh, uh, another thing that I want to mention is that sometimes uh, we, we, we just want to check out the uh, function signatures so in this case uh, we don't need to look up the doc strings at all uh, let me show you for example I want to call this my sum function and uh, then wait for a while you can see that um, you show us it's required uh, function arguments at the bottom um, or the echo area so we can then we uh, fill in the arguments yeah things like that okay next we can uh, also switch between okay uh, let me bring up the repo buffer first yeah, you can see that we have two buffers after checking uh, into the repo at the bottom we have the um, repo buffer yeah we can try out things here yeah and uh, on the top at the top is our code buffer so um, CIDA provides a command which is bound at control C control Z to switch back and forth between these two buffers which is quite convenient if you want to try out some uh, functions or test out some uh, building functions that you are unfamiliar with and uh, 
the namespace here is different which is by default user which is usually different from ours at the, at the top so sometimes if you wanna uh, switch to this namespace uh, while switching to this buffer you can just prefix the command by typing control u first and then type control c control z and uh, yeah you can see that right now we have the same namespace here as the above so uh, so now we, we can just call the functions or other things that is defined under this namespace and uh, yeah oops yeah yes things like that things like that and another thing that i want to mention oh maybe uh, this is not a feature of cider but uh, since it provides um, this evaluation mechanisms so it is convenient for us to write some try some code uh, in a common block yeah then we can just uh, try some features inside the common common block um, the normal functions of this code this file will not get affected by this common common form of block because if we uh, if we load this whole buffer it will just get ignored or maybe I'd uh, just show you it's dark string yeah it says that it will ignore, ignore bodies and yield new so which means that if we evaluate this whole buffer this common block this common form just don't have any effect and yeah I think let's the things that uh, one need to know about how to get started with CIDR to uh, start writing code in Clojure CIDR also provides some advanced features such as debugging, uh, running tests, etc. Although these features are cool but you can leave it out after you get started so that's it I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, if you like this video don't forget to like and subscribe uh, I hope you enjoy it I'll see you in the next one bye